Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com and today we're going to be going over my favorite way to attack the French defense and that is the ortho schnapp gambit. The French defense starts out with e4, e6 and this is my least favorite defense to go up against is white. I, I like to start out with e4 quite a bit. I'm an attacking player. I like to open up lines and get as much material involved as possible and attack my opponent all throughout the game. French defense, just never really enjoyed playing against it, but I really do enjoy playing the ortho snap gambit and really putting my opponent to the test, and they also just seem to not know how to play against it. So if you're not familiar with it, it starts out with C4, saying that, yeah, if you want to play D5, that's fine. I now have an additional pawn to take here. So after the pawn takes, pawn recaptures, and then queen to b3. Yes, white has the option pushing forward here to e5. Uh, if he doesn't want to give up his central pawns, you can always take here on d5. I can make videos on those variations if you want to see that. But queen to b3 uh, does give up material. It says go ahead and take this pawn here on e4. In this video, I am going to be going over the accepted line of pawn taking here on e4, and then white plays bishop to c4. And you can see already the battery here with the queen and bishop on this long light square diagonal attacking the square here on f7. f7 square being a huge weakness for black early on because the king is the only piece defending this square right here. In this video, we're going to be going over different variations of how black may continue, uh, some of them being how black actually defends the square. Uh, in the description below, I will have links to all of the variations, so if you want to skip ahead at any point to those variations, you can. Uh, but we're going to be going over knight to h6, defending that if the queen wants to defend it with queen to e7 or queen to d7. We're also going to be taking a look at bishop to e6, um, or if you see them disregarding this altogether and maybe counterattacking themselves, something like bishop to c5, we're going to go over that as well. The first variation we are going to look at is knight to h6, defending the square here on f7. And some players really don't like to bring their queen involved into the game too early, especially something like queen to e7, as it does block off the bishop here on f8. It makes it more difficult for black to ever castle on the king side. And so knight to h6 makes some sense as far as how they want to defend this. And now white's going to play d3. This does a few things. Yes, it opens up the door for the dark square bishop. If you're curious, why not up here to d4? Uh, d3 also threatens the square here on e4. At some point, white really wants to play knight to f3. And if your opponent just has your pawn hanging out here on e4 for the rest of the game, it's pretty annoying. So d3 does attack the center of the board. Uh, white can definitely take here on e4 if black at some point does not want to take this material here on d3. But white's also open to just giving up material. As with some gambits, you're okay giving up more than just a pawn for a stronger attack. And that's the exact same thing that you're going to see in this gambit as well. If they decide to take... That is fine with us. We're going to go ahead and take with our bishop here on h6. If they take, that has now removed the defender of this f7 square. So white can come in, take with the bishop here on f7. And then the king is forced to move and it has two options. If they come here to d7, kudos to us for laying a trap here because that's going to be checkmate. So that's definitely the worst of the two options for black. If they play king to e7, uh, then knight to f3. And you can start to see this is a pretty fantastic board state for white. We don't even care too much about this pawn on d3. I can play knight to c3, castle on the king side. There's an exposed king here on e7. The bishop here on f8 is blocked from that. Uh, none of the other material is involved into the game at all. So this should be a very fun game for sure uh, from white standpoint, just attacking this exposed king. Now that may not take with their pawn. They could play queen to e7, just saying, hey, once I do take on the next move, I'm going to have a discovered attack on the king here. And this is a situation where we're just going to go ahead and take that pawn, and that's fine. And we don't even care if they take with their queen with check. We're going to play knight to e2. And you can start to see black can continue to gobble up material, and that is okay. We're going to let this queen just move all around, and white's going to continue develop, 
developing material, even though they may give up a few pawns. So the queen can take here on g2. That's fine. Rook here to g1, protected by the knight here. Black queen can gobble up more material here on h2. And then bishop to f4. You can start to see white getting pieces involved into the game, attacking material here. And the material is just going to have to continue to move. So queen to h4 and then knight to c3. You can see black has two pieces developed, but knight here on h6, not really the square that black wants is knight. The queen on h4, it has done some damage as far as taking up pawns, but if you look from white's standpoint, there's a lot of material involved into the game. This is pretty good for white here. And if you look at black's threats, well, okay, this pawn here on f2 is exposed. Uh, by this queen here attacking it. So they could play bishop to c5, just trying to continue their attacks. Uh, but now white just has castle on the queen side, doesn't really care too much about this threat anymore. Maybe the bishop takes here on f2, but then rook to h1 attacking the queen. The queen comes to g4. White can take material on h6 if the pawn takes. Then knight to d5 gets pretty scary from black standpoint, threatening coming up here to c7. Still have the exposed pawn here on f7 at some point. Uh, so a lot of attacking lines uh, that white has in this position. If we come back a few moves, instead of the bishop coming down to c5 to attack the pawn on f2, maybe instead they just play bishop to e7 getting ready to castle on the king side, but you can probably see that that exposes the pawn here on g7 that white can go ahead and take here. If they don't play bishop to e7, they could also play knight to c6, just trying to get material involved into the game. Uh, but now knight to d5, still that threat coming up here to c5 or c7. And even if they play bishop to d6, Protecting this, white can still just take, and after they exchange knight to c7 check, this is forking the rook here on a8. Now after pawn to d3, we've already looked at the pawn takes. If queen here to e7, we could also see bishop to c5 just attacking our weak square here on f2. Uh, but that's completely fine because we can take that knight here on h6, and then after they take... Again, we're removing that defender of the f7 square, so we can hop in with bishop to f7. Remember, king to d7 is going to be checkmate, so hopefully they do that, but they probably won't. The best move for them would be king to uh, f8. King to e7, just going to get more exposed, more central. Uh, definitely not what the black king wants to do, but after king to f8, uh, we have knight to c3 here, getting another piece of all of the game, attacking this pawn here in the center. White can castle on the king side. If this pawn ever moves, then knight to f3. Uh, so a lot of attacking lines that white has in this position as well. You can see that white's really trying to get a lot of material involved into the game, attacking the exposed king, and just continuously putting pressure on the opponent. Next variation we are going to look at is queen to e7. Probably better if they protect the pawn here on f7 with their queen instead of the knight. But it's always good to understand what you should do if your opponent plays certain things. Uh, so queen to e7, while this does protect it, it also blocks off the bishop here on f8. And so they could play knight to f6, simple development move. But it still leaves the king unable to castle on the king's side. Now, in this case, because the queen is here on e7, I do like the move knight to c3 uh, before d3 because uh, in some situations, white has knight to d5, uh, and this does attack the queen. So it's very different where we'll go over in just a minute where if the queen's here on d7, uh, I don't think that knight to c3 makes as much sense as the first move, but queen to e7, knight to c3, and then we have lots of variations that black could play from here. Knight to f3. Okay, now we're going to play pawn to d3. If they take, we're just playing bishop here to e3. Uh, we do need to protect our king. That would be a discovered check with the queen here on uh, e7. And now from here, maybe knight to c6, uh, knight to f3. Uh, if they do something uh, like uh, bishop to e3 and then d2, just trying to get our king more central, exposed, uh, I would just go ahead and play f1. We can get this material back if we want to at some point, 
uh, but you definitely don't want to get your king in the center of the board in this spot. You really want to be bringing your rook over here with your king not there. So if you want to attack this long uh, D file, you can. Because remember, their king on E8 probably not going to be castling to the king side anytime soon. Uh, so having that in the center with more attacking pieces for white is going to be good. Now, if they don't play knight to F6, uh, they could play knight to C6. Now, the difference here is white can play knight to f5 or d5. It couldn't before because the knight was here on f6, but it can now. It's attacking the queen. It's also attacking the pawn here on c7. Uh, there's really two squares that black can go to to defend that. That could play queen to e5. Uh, and now we're just going to play d3. And then if they take, we're playing bishop here to e3, preparing for knight to f3, attacking the queen here. Uh, if they instead play queen back to d8, that's fine. Same thing, d3, and if they take now knight to f3, don't have to worry about bishop here to e3 yet. If instead of bringing the knights out, they could play bishop to e6, but this does expose this pawn here on b7, so the queen can just take here on uh, b7, maybe they take our bishop, that's fine. We're going to take their rook here on a8. And you can see the knights being pinned down, so they can't move their knight. They could always move their queen back, but they could also bring their queen to b4, which does also protect the knight here on b8, so that's an option. But then their pawn on e4 is going to be taken, and this is also a uh, check. Last option we're going to look at in this variation is if they play c6, preparing for pawn to b5, uh, just trying to get this light square bishop off of the c4 square because it's putting so much pressure on this f7 square and black really wants to alleviate some of that pressure, eventually get the dark square bishop involved into the game, castle on the king side. Uh, from here, same thing, d3. They could ignore this right away and just play b5. And this is a very important move that you need to understand because you can probably see that d3 does block in the light square bishop. White needs to take with the knight here on b5. And after they take, it's important not to recapture because if you take with your bishop, you just gave up a knight. And then they can just play bishop to d7 and black is winning. What you need to do instead if they play pawn takes here on b5, which they probably will, probably going to take the knight that you're giving them, is you play bishop to d5. And you can start to see some of the threats that you have here. Obviously the main one of rook taking here on a8. But even if they start to try to block this in any fashion, they just don't have any good move. So that's how you're going to respond if they trade that c6 and then b5 push. The next variation we are going to look at is queen to d7. Still defending the square here on f7. Now it's blocking off the light square bishop from getting involved into the game. We're going to play d3. They have a few options. They don't have to take it, but they definitely can. If they take right here, we're playing knight to f3, getting this involved into the game as soon as that pawn leaves the e4 square. Uh, maybe now they play knight to f6, just trying as fast as possible to castle on the king side now that the queen is not blocking off the dark square bishop. But now it's real tough because white's next move is going to be rook to e1. If they play bishop to e7, well now white has knight to e5, attacking the queen here on d7. And the knight, bishop, and queen are all attacking the f7 square. That's not going to go well for black. But if the bishop goes anywhere else, rook to e1 and... Really, the bishop may just have to come back here to e7. There's not a lot of good moves for the bishop right here. Maybe they play knight to c6, but same problem. Rook to e1. How do they really protect it? Bishop to uh, e7. Bishop takes on f7. This isn't going to be good. If instead they try to block it with their knight, if their thought was knight to c6, knight to e7, well, then knight to g5. This is not going to go well for black. The knight, bishop, and queen all attacking this pawn here on f7. The rook pinning down the knight right here. Uh, and even same thing if the king comes to d8. Yes, it, it removes this threat here on the e-file. But you still have knight to g5 you have to worry about. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the square on f7. Knight coming here to f7. Check. This is forking the rook right here. The knight's protected by the bishop and the queen. 
So it's really going to be difficult for black in that position. If we come back, they don't have to take with their pawn here on d3. Uh, if they don't take, they could just play knight to f6, develops a piece, defends the pawn here on uh, e4. In that case, we're going to go ahead and play knight to c3, get as much material involved into the game as possible. Uh, now, if they want to go ahead and take, that's fine. We're going to play knight to f3. If they don't, maybe from this position, they play knight to c6. Okay, well, now we're just going to go ahead and take this pawn right here. Uh, pretty much all moves, if they don't take our pawn, we're going to take their pawn right here. So same thing with uh, bishop to d6, preparing to castle on the king side. We're going to go ahead and take with our pawn uh, right here. Hopefully, eventually, setting up a fork at some point here on e5. Uh, but then knight to f3, castle on the king side, get our Dursk or bishop involved into the game. That is going to be the game plan. If they don't play knight to f6, they could also play bishop to d6. Pretty much any move they're going to play. Not taking our pawn here on d3. We're just going to take with our own pawn right here. White's equalized in material. Both sides down two pawns, but you can see black has no center pawns. White has a very strong pawn here on the E4 square. Um, all their pieces can get involved into the game very easily. The slight square bishop for black is still blocked by the queen right here. White can play knight to F3, castle on the king side. So as far as development, this is a very solid structure for white. Uh, and this all stems from the French defense, which usually black's trying to solidify the pawns in the center of the board and really block off a lot of attacking lines, especially these light square diagonals here for white. White's completely blown that planet for black. And so they're, they're definitely gonna have to be thinking about something different than they thought when they started out with the French defense. The next variation we're gonna look at is bishop to e6. Just trying to put a stop to this attack here on the long light square diagonal. Well, I can just go ahead and take with the bishop right here. Main thing is after the pawn takes to not capture here on e6. It may look tempting to go ahead and take here, put the opponent in check, but white actually has a better move, and that is queen taking here on b7. Because really, they need to be playing knight to d7. Not going to play knight to c6. This is going to lose the knight. This is attacking both the rook, the king, and the pawn here on e4. So they're really going to be playing knight to d7. And after this, then the queen takes here on e4. So white gobble up two pawns in material. Then black still has an exposed king. The square here on f7 has been captured. Uh, and white has a pretty good board state. They will want to push forward with their d-pawn, get their other pieces involved into the game. Uh, the, the light square bishop and the queen have been doing most of the work, so not as active as the other pieces that we've seen in the other variations for white, but you can see uh, that they are now up in material uh, and should have a pretty good game the rest of the way. Before we get into the last variation, if you haven't already, if you wouldn't mind, please hitting the like button. Just takes one second, but definitely helps out the channel. I know a lot of people have been supporting all of these opening videos around the gambits. like to see the in-depth analysis on how we can play these crazy gambits, uh, but definitely would appreciate the support. Also lets me know that you hate playing against the French defense as much as I do. So with that, we'll get into the last variation. That is, if they just completely ignore this F7 square, maybe Bishop to C5 just says, hey, I'm going to attack your, your weak square here on F2. Uh, definitely a mistake to not pay attention to the f7 square because we are absolutely taking on f7 if they are not going to protect it we've already shown that king to d7 is a problem because that's going to be checkmate for white so hopefully they do that if they actually fall for that please let me know because that would be awesome I haven't got someone to fall for the king to d7 but i it's coming it's definitely coming so they could play king to f8 we can just continue to gobble up material here maybe knight to e2 preparing to castle on the king side uh, you can see white's equalized in material, but all day long I'm taking white's position here uh, because the king here on f 8s extremely exposed, uh, and white can just start to attack the rest of the game. So that is my favorite way to attack the French defense, the ortho-snop gambit. Definitely 
play this. Let me know what you guys think. There are some other variations that we didn't go over uh, as far as the decline line. Um, also, just the French defense early on. Uh, if you guys want to see some additional videos, maybe after C4, uh, D5. And then if we take here, if you want to see a video on E5 or just the pawn taking on D5, I could definitely make those videos as well. Let me know in the comments what you want to see in future videos. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.